Hey everybody, so today we're going to talk about nonlinear systems of inequalities. You should have seen linear systems of inequalities in your algebra class. Okay, so we're going to talk about what if something is nonlinear. Um, so first, let's talk about the steps. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is graph each equation or each inequality as if it were an equation. Okay, so for this, obviously, you're going to use various techniques. You might use the techniques that you use to graph a parabola, right, with the vertex. You might be using base graphs and transformations. You might be using the techniques that we use to graph polynomials, whatever it is. You're going to graph it however you would normally graph it. Then you're going to test a point. Okay, and the only thing that's important about which point you pick is you can't test a point on the line. Okay, so you can't graph, you can't pick a test point that's on the graph you already have, it has to be off of the graph. Okay, and then the last thing you're going to do is shade the solution region. Okay, all right, so let's see some examples. Okay, so we're gonna graph the solution set and then we're, give, we're gonna give one example of a solution. Okay, so let's look at some of these. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is write each of these as an equation and then we're going to graph them. Okay, so the first thing it would be y equals x squared, okay, which we know is a parabola. Okay, so let's look at our graph, what it would look like with a parabola. Okay, so this is actually just the base graph of a parabola, so we're going to go ahead and graph our key points right, negative one, one, zero, zero, and one, one, and then we're gonna draw in our parabola. Okay. All right, then for our other one, this is x squared plus y squared equals 16. Oops, I said equals one plus. Okay, now this is a circle with its center at zero, zero, and a radius of four, okay? So the center is at the origin, and then the radius is four, so I'm gonna go out four. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay. And then I'm gonna to try to draw something that's as circular as possible. Well, that's kind of an oval, but that's all right. Okay, so now I'm gonna test a point for each one of these, okay? So for the first one, I can pick anything that isn't um, on the actual parabola itself, okay? So normally I test the point zero, zero just because it's easy to plug in, okay? But because that's on the parabola, I'm just gonna test this point zero, one, okay? So, okay, I'm gonna test uh, zero, one, like I said, okay? So I'm gonna plug this in. One is greater than or equal to zero squared, that's true, okay? So when I shade in this region, I wanna include this point, okay? So the parabola 
breaks up the plane into two parts, the stuff that's inside the parabola and then the stuff that's outside of the parabola. So because I want to include this point, I'm going to shade everything that's inside the parabola. Okay. It has nothing to do with the circle. This just has to do with the parabola. Okay. So there's my shaded region. Okay, and then for my second inequality, x squared plus y squared is less than or equal to 16, I am going to test the point 0, 0. Okay, so I'm going to test 0, 0. Okay, so this is 0 squared plus 0 squared is less than or equal to 16, which is true. Okay, so when I shade, I'm either going to shade outside the circle or inside the circle. And because I want to include the point zero, 0, I'm going to shade inside. Okay, again, this has nothing to do with the other inequality. This only has to do with the circle. Okay. Now, the solution for the system, remember, is the place where those overlap, okay? So for this example, you can see that they're going to overlap right in here, okay? So this is my solution region, this part here, okay? And I'm going to give that one of those points that I can see in here as my example, okay? So my example solution, I'm just going to pick any point in my solution region. So for example, I'll pick the point 0, 1. Okay. All right. Let's look at another example. Okay, so again, we're going to draw these as if they had equal signs. Okay, so I'm going to draw y equals square root x, and that's one of my base graphs. Okay. So my key points are 0, 0, 1, 1, and then 4, 2. Okay, so that's that graph. If you want to test a point at this point, you can. Um, remember, you can test anything that isn't on the line. Okay, so I'm going to test this point here, which is 1, 0. Right, you can't test the origin because it's right here. You could test this point, this one, this one, anything that's not on this actual graph here. Okay, so I just selected this point because it's easy to plug in. Okay. So this would be 0 is less than or equal to root 1, which is true. Okay, so I want to include this point in my shading. All right, so I'm going to shade below the graph. Okay. All right. Then my other one is 2 to the negative x. Okay, so just a reminder, y equals 2 to the x is a base graph. Okay, so that graph would look like this. Okay, and then for 2 to the negative x, we're going to reflect it across the y axis. Okay, so we're going to take this point will still be part of our graph. We're going to take this point and reflect it across to negative 1, 2. Okay, and then we're going to take this point and reflect it across to 1, 1 half. Okay. That would be here. All right, and then I'm going to draw like this. Okay. Now I'm going to test a point. Okay. So um, I'm going to test the point zero, zero. Okay, just because it's a nice, easy point to test. Okay. So I have 0 is greater than or equal to 2 to the 0, right? Remember 2 to the 0 is 1. Okay, so that's false, all right? 
So that means when I graph, I don't want to include this. So I'm going to shade above. Okay, so here you can see that the intersection part is this part in between the two graphs right here, right, this part. All right, and so for my example solution, okay, I'm just going to pick a point that I know is between those two, okay. So for example, I might go with 3, 1, okay, I could go with 2, one half, right? Anything like that. So let's just go with three, one. Okay, because that point is right here. It's right in the middle of my solution region. All right, let's see another example. There we go. Okay, so the first thing we're going to draw is y equals x cubed. Okay, that's one of our base graphs. So we know our key points. Okay, and then we also know the shape of this graph is that S-shaped curve. Looks like that. Okay. Uh, then we're going to draw y equals x squared. Okay. Now I wanted to point out the difference between less than or less than or equal to. Okay, so in this example, you aren't gonna have the actual graph itself be part of the solution region. For this one, it will be, and for this one, it won't be. And the way that we signify that is actually by using a dotted line. Okay, so I'm gonna put in my key points, all right, and then we're gonna do a dotted line version of this graph, okay? I'm actually going to bring this a little bit below so that I can bring this one out like that. Okay. All right. So there is my two graphs, and then I'm going to test a point. Okay. And for both of them, I'm just going to test the point zero, one. Okay. That's this point here. All right. So here I would get one is greater than or equal to zero squared, or zero cubed, sorry, which is true. Okay, so that means this is part of it, so it's going to be above this. And it's going to be everything that's above that graph, including this little part right here. Okay. Then for this one, we're still going to test the point zero, 01. Okay, so we would have uh, 1 is less than 0 squared, which is false. Okay, so this is not part of it. So that means I'm going to have to shade outside of the parabola. Okay, so that's going to be out here. Okay, but it's also going to be this part out here, okay, including this tiny piece here, okay. So this actually has two solution regions. You can see this part over here, which is the majority of it, okay, but then I also have this tiny piece in here, which is the solution region, okay. Now when I give my example solution, Okay, it's going to be easier to give an example from over here, so I might give negative 1, comma, 0. Okay? All right. Um, I want to do one more example, I think.
Okay, just so we can get an example that has a trig function in it. Okay, all right. So we're still only going to graph one period of the trig function because after that we know it repeats. Okay, so I'm going to draw my base graph for sine. Okay, now when you're picking a point to test, you're trying to pick something easy, okay? So you do want to pick something that you can actually plug into sign so that you know what the answer is going to be and you know if you should shade that point or not, okay? So I'm going to pick this point right here, which is pi over 2, 0, okay? Remember, you don't want to pick something that's on the graph, so you can't pick this point, this one, this one, this one, or this one, right? Those would be the easy ones that are on there, okay? But you want to pick something that's away from that. So you could certainly pick like 0, 1, pi over 2, 0. You could pick pi 1, you know, anything like that. But you do want to pick something that's easy to plug into sine, okay? So one of the special angles or one of the quadrantal angles. And then you want to pick something that you know where it is on the graph. Okay, so when I test this, I'm going to get 0 is less than or equal to sine of pi over 2. Okay, now I know that sine of pi over 2 is 1. Okay, if you didn't know that, you could certainly see that here on the graph. Okay, so this is true, so I want to include that. So that means I'm going to be gra uh, shading below my graph here. like that. All right, now y is greater than or equal to zero. We actually don't need to test that. That's the um, y equals zero is the x-axis, so that would be just here, okay? And then we know that y greater than zero means above, okay? So we don't have to test any points. We know that we'd be talking about this part of the graph. Okay, so where is my solution region? Well, it's this part right here. Okay, and then if we're going to give an example of a solution, all right, we would want to give something that's in this little hump, so I might do pi over 2, 1 half. All right, so there are some examples of how to do this. Um, if you have any questions, make sure you come to the Zoom, and I'll see you guys soon.